back to the hemp hits. Uh, I know it's been a little while. I really apologize. Just so much stuff has been going on and um, not, not bad stuff, not good stuff. Just, you know, just keeping, keeping things moving. Uh, I'm actually getting married at the end of September as well. So a lot of that planning and, and different things like that that go along with that. Uh, I think you've been busy too. Changed jobs and uh, actually recently my uh, the job I was at, they got bought out. So I'm kind of dealing with that now. It's interesting. It's good times. Um, anyways, and uh, I think the la one of the last videos I did was, um, you know, thanking somebody who was a, a big time reviewer of fountain pens for, um, you know, everything that they contributed to the, uh, to the industry and to the hobby. And shortly after that, I almost completely stopped buying fountain pens. It just, uh, I don't know, something about, you know, looking forward to their videos um, and not having any new videos to look at and, and things like that. It just kind of made me rethink my hobby a little bit. And, and, and you know, that happens from time to time where you might, you know, go on a little binge of buying a ton of pens and then you don't really buy that many for a little stretch. And then you, you know, it's still there and it's still fun. And then you jump back into it. So kind of took a little bit of a, a hiatus, a little bit of a break uh, from fountain pens and went a little bit more into my other hobby, which is uh, watches and uh, pocket watches and things like that. And funny enough, I'm not wearing any right now because usually I take them off uh, before I go to bed. So um, it's possible that you might see some videos in the future where I do uh, some reviews on some of my watches and things like that. Um, and then, you know, if you guys want to continue seeing those, I'll do more of those. If not, uh, I don't know, maybe I'll put them on another, another channel. I was running a different channel before, and at this point, I'd rather consolidate if I can, just to make things a little bit easier. But, um, yeah, so I was thinking about it since I have seen that there, I have more subscribers and there's more people kind of checking this out. And I did want to do a quick video. I might actually do a second one after this one. We'll see. So the quick one that I wanted to um, do is uh, something that I've been thinking about lately um, regarding my hobby and, and kind of why I slowed down with buying things is that the hobby can get rather expensive. Uh, there are a lot of fountain pens that, that cost uh, a lot and a lot is pretty much anything over $100 for most people. Um, whatever your, whatever your uh, a lot means to you. Um, but I wanted to talk really quickly. So this is one of my favorite pens. You've probably seen it before. It's the uh, uh, Sailor 1911. This is the large um, and it has uh, just a really nice, really nice finish, really nice size, balance, weight, everything. It's just uh, really, really nice and has that magnificent um, gold nib. That has a little bit of that. I think it's like palladium or something like that on top of it. Um, but it's super, super nice. Um, definitely one of my favorites. Uh, has a little bit more of that classic look. Uh, so it's not too shiny, too extravagant, nothing like that. It has that cigar shape that's pretty fairly common. For, you know, uh, But it's an amazing, amazing writer. Uh, very well built and, and a lot about it I really, really love. And <clears throat> just can't say uh, too many great enough great things about it and this is uh and i would say over the 200 hundred dollar price range uh, obviously you can buy stuff in different places but that's kind of where this one sits so let's compare this with uh let's see what do i have over here i probably should have brought different pens but what i have handy here is let's say an esterbrook and then let's say the uh is this a parker 51 um so these are the two just samples. I mean, there's there's a ton of different pens that you could put into this category, uh, like a Lamy Safari, uh, different things like that, uh, Pilot Metropolitan. <clears throat> you know, anything like under thirty dollars, basically, uh, you could you could fit there. Uh, this was a little bit more than than the thirty dollars, and this would be probably in the twenties. Uh, you might be able to find some sixteen or something like that uh, pre-owned. Uh, Esther Brooks, but basically what I wanted to talk about is, you know, what what it, what, it, what is the best way to go or, or what makes most sense and obviously that's going to depend on who you are and your finances and, you know, how much of the hobby you're into and what kind of pens you like. Um, so I would say kind of early on, you know, most people probably won't spend too much more than 
twenty thirty dollars on their first pens, and and a lot of people stay in that in that arena just because there are so many nice pens out there uh, in that price point that are amazing. Um, I know Lamy Safari does really well. They have a ton of different colors coming out all the time uh, every year, uh, special editions, different things like that. Uh, then you have like the uh, the preppies and the the, the varsity. Um, trying to think of what else is in that price range. You can you start getting close to like a Coeco Sport, um, some other pilots that are in that in that lower price bracket, the Metropolitan, and some of the other ones uh, that are a little bit less known. So there's a ton. There's a um, actually the the Twisby uh, has some in that price range as well. So there's a lot a lot of really good pens under fifty dollars. Um, then you get into uh, like Jinhao, things like that. Pen BBS, I think some of them are, are, are in the lower price range as well. There's just so many different options now, uh, which is really good. Uh, you can get a bunch of different colors, uh, different styles, different filling systems. Um, I would say about 10 years ago, uh, you probably didn't have as many, and I could be wrong, uh, options as you do have today in the under $50 price point. Um, and, and that's a good thing, I think, that that, they, that, that part of the industry has boomed. Uh, they're seeing that a lot of people are, are more apt to buy something uh, under $50 and kind of stay in that ballpark. As long as there's enough choices, uh, there's enough uh, colors, there's enough uh, change where, where you can get a, a variety and it's still evolving and, and, and changing that way. Um, and, you, and, you, and you have that, the, those options of, the ton of options where you might be hesitant actually now uh, to jump into the 50 to $75 bracket or the 75 to hundred dollar bracket, because there's just so much to discover in that lower price point. Um, there are going to be some nicer uh, models out there that, that might intrigue you. Um, and it's difficult, I would say initially to, to get your hands on some of those uh, that are a little priced a little bit higher because they're not found in, uh, in stores. Uh, generally and uh, you really have to find like a specialty store or find somebody who has them or take a chance on Amazon or eBay and other places and that can be kind of tricky so um, I would say now that I've been collecting for definitely over two years uh, it's tough um, I would say to you know take your time like the first three six nine months whatever it is stay under that fifty dollars um maybe 75 if, if you if there's something else that kind of really uh grabs you but buy a little bit here and there and that lower price point really get an idea of of what you like uh really get an idea of the weight uh the, the shape the materials the the nibs um and really get an idea because there's so many different companies and they're all just a little bit different um in in the um the actual function of writing, um, but they're all going to feel different. They're all, even the nibs are going to feel different when they're on the paper. Um, just a lot of subtle things, and and it's great to explore. Um, I'll do a different video uh, shortly after uh, comparing uh, new versus vintage a little bit, just the basics. Um, <clears throat> but I would say that you know don't rush the the hobby. Uh, if you're if you're buying twenty dollar pens. Uh, I know myself that as soon as I like something that's in the $20 range, I'm like, oh, I wonder what's in the $40 range. I wonder what's in the $50 range. And, you know, you can quickly buy a lot of stuff. And then on the other flip side, you'll quickly maybe get rid of or not really like those early ones that were in the $10 to $20. But appreciate each level of, of what's available. Uh, try not to look at it as a price point difference, but look at it as a... Uh, product difference you know you're not going to find a $20 pen and find the exact same thing in $80 they're just built different uh, you might find different brands that are in the other bracket um, don't compare basically like don't compare an $80 pen with a $20 pen they're completely different brackets appreciate them for what they are appreciate for you know the cost versus value versus use versus how easy it was for you to get one versus everything you know um, don't compare them that way um, but i would say like take your time get those 10 to 50 dollar pens and really appreciate them and really hone down what you like um, you know don't be afraid to buy something that might not 
immediately um, appeal to you, but maybe you grow into it later, or maybe you discover a brand in that 40 or $50 range and you decide that, huh, I wonder what else they have because they do often have a ton of different models to choose from. And maybe you didn't like the one that you bought initially, but maybe they had another one. And just by you know buying that first one, it introduced you to that whole brand and, uh, and, and, and took you that, that direction. Um, at this point, you know, once you kind of pass over $100, over $200, it's very difficult to go back and buy like $20 and $30 pens just because of the, what am I getting out of it in, you know, where you are in your hobby. And that's where, you know, your taste becomes a little bit more expensive. And I see it happen all the time that people are jumping from like 50, then to 100, and then 200, and then 300, then 500. And then, I mean, even a little bit ago, I saw somebody go into like $900 or $1,000. And I'm like, wow, like, how did that happen? I mean, obviously, if the finances are there and, and it's definitely what you want to do, then it's great. But don't like hop too quickly just for the sake of hopping and, and getting something uh, closer to your grail or something that like, oh, I didn't know I could afford this. I didn't know that I'd be able to, to jump to this. So let me just grab it just to grab it. Like appreciate the hobby. You know, this is one of those hobbies that you can have for the rest of your life. You know, you could, I know tons of people that have like their whole collection is under $50 and they might have like 80, 90, 100 pens and it's awesome. And they appreciate them all. I mean, make the hobby your own. Um, do whatever you want to do. Um, what I would say is that if you already have more than six, nine, or 12 months of experience and, and you really know what you want, 100% spend a little more and get something a little bit more special. Um, hobbies, I think, are, you know, part of it is collecting, but the other part is also owning and using. Um, so every now and again, I think it's great to splurge on yourself, get something that you are going to enjoy, you're going to appreciate. Don't ever overspend because I think that's that's where that can bite you is if you do, you know, jump up to the next tier, you're really unsure if, you, if you're going to like it and you see something online and you're like, oh, I need to get that. And then you end up realizing that you overspent on something or that the value of what you thought you got really was didn't match. That's where it like, can really bother you, especially if you're spending a lot of money. Um, I would say just be smart, you know, look at the market value on certain things, do your research, go to different uh, places online or wherever, you, wherever you're going to try to get a really good uh, price on something. Um, but that, that's it, you know, know what you know what you like and then go after it, you know. Um, like if I had owned like six of these all different colors, that'd be amazing because they're, this is such a nice pen. Doesn't mean that owning six of these it's not gonna blow me away or anything like that it's just a different thing you know this isn't my ideal kind of pen I, I really like it for what it is the cost of value is amazing you know these are really really nice um and even the parker 51s are really nice um these are really really nice if you like that kind of that kind of pen but there's so much out there you know so i would say you know don't worry you know if you're not getting like the expensive pens and don't worry if your collection is under $50 um, and stay in that bracket. Um, that's fine. But I will say if you ever have the chance to splurge a little bit on yourself, maybe get like a hundred dollar pen or $120 pen, whatever it is, whatever price range it is, if it's outside of your like comfort zone, I highly, highly recommend it. Given the research um, on price, where to buy it, what it is, do your research, ask questions. Definitely, 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 you know, splurge on yourself a little bit. Try something on the higher end and, um, you know, try to find something that maybe has a return policy or something, but don't hesitate. I know it can get really expensive um, really quickly. And I mean, I can give you that whole thing where, you know, you could buy five of these or you could get like a, like a hundred and something dollar pen. Um, but I'm not going to do that because, you know, whatever you buy, make sure you enjoy it. Um, but yes, I would say that if you have the knowledge, the experience, and you know what you like, there's a bunch of pens that, that I wouldn't hesitate to recommend or other websites wouldn't hesitate, hesitate to recommend it to you. Um, there's tons of information out there. 
Um, but yeah, so uh, sorry this went way too long. Um, but underneath, uh, let me know uh, what kind of like pens you, you like, the ones that you mostly use. And if you can, put down uh, what was your first big purchase. And that's it. Thanks.